Mr. McCoy back with Camp Invention Theater featuring the mystery of the flashing lights. As this tale appears in two parts today, be thinking about how it relates to our work with Duct Tape Billionaire. And now, here comes part one of the mystery of the flashing lights. Davis Bell sat up and yawned. He was puzzled by the strangeness of the dark shapes around him. Nothing looked right. It was night, long past midnight, he guessed. Then his head cleared enough to remember that he was in a tent on Cape Cod, in a sleeping bag, not at home, or even in the old RV. Lying to his right was his sister Liz, on his left was his mother, and on her left was his dad, all sound asleep. Davis sat up just long enough to realize that he would like very much to be asleep again, like everyone else. Just before he lay down, he saw short flashes of light off to the right of the tent. A beam of light was on for a couple of seconds, then off for what seemed like five or six, then on, then off. The whole sequence lasted just a few minutes. Oh, right, Davis thought, the lighthouse. And then he lay down and went back to sleep. When the tent glowed with the light of morning, he heard and smelled breakfast being cooked. That would be Dad. Dad always got up early on these camping trips and fixed things they normally didn't eat, like corned beef hash. Liz sat up next to him and stretched. Ah, I slept really well, she murmured happily. I was so tired. They had arrived only the day before, and after setting up camp and spent the rest of the day swimming, body surfing, and flying kites with their summer friends, Paul and Rennie McGill. Paul was 15, the same age as Liz, and Rennie, short for Renata, was age 12, the same as Davis. Their families had found each other five summers ago. They had met on the beach, and everybody had enjoyed everybody, uh, parents included, so they had started reserving adjacent campsites at the same time every summer. They were together one short week out of every year. I didn't sleep so well, grumbled Davis. I woke up in the middle of the night and saw the lighthouse flashing over there. And he waved over to the right. You mean over there, corrected Liz, pointing left. That's where the lighthouse is. Lighthouse says, you must have been dreaming. I know the difference between dreaming and being awake. Davis, and this was being awake, and I saw a light over there, uh, on for a short flash and off for six counts. Well, it sounds like the lighthouse, said Liz. Maybe you just got turned around in your sleeping bag. Maybe, said Davis, but I don't think so. I remember seeing you to my right, the same direction I saw the flashing light from. At least, I think I do. Well, it's not important, he said. The truth is, it was important to him, but he sensed one of those long, drawn-out discussions coming that he sometimes had with Liz, where she was determined to be right regardless of the facts. Not wanting one of those, he decided to end the matter. Later that day, Liz, Paul, Davis, and Rennie were walking on the beach together. They had only to walk a quarter mile from the campground on a path through some woods to reach the beach. Liz and Paul were walking in front. Rennie and Davis noted that Liz and Paul's hands occasionally brushed, and the two kept on smiling at each other. That is really repulsive, said Rennie. We'll never be like that. <laughs> That's for sure, said Davis. Did you know that they've been emailing each other? Of course said Rennie. How could I not? I saw one signed, sealed with a kiss. Really repulsive. Hey, look here, cried Davis suddenly. Hoof prints. There were, in fact, hoof prints in the sand, up high above the tide mark. They ran for just a short distance and then stopped. Liz and Paul turned. Those are hoof prints, all right, agreed Liz casually. Well, isn't that a little unusual? asked Davis. 
Nah, said Paul, people are always riding horses around here. But on the beach? asked Rennie. Sure, said Liz. The two turned and started walking and chatting again. You know, said Rennie, I can't stand being a chaperone. Me neither, agreed Davis, and the two ran off down the beach. That night, a special yearly event was held. The dads had gotten a permit to have a fire on the beach. When it was roaring away, food was cooked and happily eaten. Then, well after dark, when the fire had burned down and deep orange coals had formed, marshmallows were speared on skewers and toasted. Finally, the stories began. Mom took the last turn and told an eerie story about Cape Cod moon cussers of long ago, so called because they despised the presence of the moon. It gave sea captains light to see by when they navigated the dangerous waters near the shore. It was well known, she said, that some scoundrels would take advantage of storm-stranded ships and strip them of their cargo as soon as they knew the crew was safe or drowned. But the real moon cussers, she said, were shadowy figures who purposefully misled the sailors to crash upon the rocks. They rode the beaches on horseback on dark or stormy nights and used bright lanterns to mimic the pulse of light from lighthouses in order to confuse ships into grounding on the rocks where the crews were murdered and the cargo plundered. When Mom finished, everyone shivered. What do you suppose Mom's story has to do with what Davis saw in the tent? Share what you think with your fellow entrepreneur. We will continue the mystery of the flashing lights later today, but for now, you have more work to do as we conclude Duct Tape Billionaire. It's time now to get to work.